Okay, we're now live on Facebook. So, good evening, everyone. Good evening, IFNG. Good evening, Niner Squad. So, um, tonight, Sir Irvin is here with us again to give us an orientation for our most targeted fund for us medical allied practitioners and uh, professionals. So, before that, um, we would like... Oh, Sir Armel, are you raising your hand? Okay. So, before that, uh, while Sir Irvin is sharing our video to their um, Facebook profiles, so I would like to invite you guys to attend our um, scheduled lectures this coming weeks and days. So for, to, for Friday, we have two lectures. Uh, at 9 p.m., we will be having IDP as our lecturer on how we can ace our exam. And then at 10.30 p.m., uh, elite would give us um, some inspiration, motivational um, lecture on how we can prepare ourselves on taking the exam. And then on Saturday, uh, Sir <clears throat> Sir DJ would give us uh, another lecture for OVP. So look forward with that. And then on November three, I think Sir Jeff invited a lecture. I forgot their name. And let me check. Um. Oh, it's. Uh, Jessica and Vincey. So look forward with that, guys. It's on November 3. And then, by the way, do not forget, for those who will be taking the exam until December, uh, we still have our promo from British Council of Philippines. So please grab that so that you can avail a free book and speak up so that you can test yourself if you're really ready on taking the exam. So another thing, we would like to greet again, Sir Jeff, because he is celebrating his birthday now because he wasn't able to celebrate it on his uh, birthday last time. So Sir Jeff, enjoy your trip. Hopefully you can bring Pasalubong for us <laughs> because we've seen your posts, like you're a, a superstar in a airport, bringing your bag and luggage. So hopefully you can bring some pasalubong for us. We're looking forward to that. And then Sir Marbs, Sir Marbs, are you there? <laughs> I am looking forward with your pasalubong as well. We are looking Hi, good evening, everyone. Time. Yeah, yes. we're just uh, so there's some delay with our balik and boxes because of the COVID. <laughs> just wait for that, Miss Glads. Oo nga. So I'm looking forward with that, with your groceries. <laughs> <laughs> Grocery items. <laughs> yeah, with the alim puring. You know that. I think I'm I'm down to my last two minutes of sharing this to our GCs. It's okay. Last two minutes. Win M, no problem. Push, push. We are looking forward to this. Kasi ang hirap talaga. Nakakalito. Yeah. And I just want... Process. Yeah. <laughs> I just process. want to greet my son, Miss Glad. Oh yeah, Rafa. Happy birthday, Rafa. Happy birthday <laughs> to my ina anak. Happy eighth month, Riley Pucci Puch. Shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to you. Lamu <laughs> <laughs> yan. Kanina pa kita siya shout out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bawat post. <laughs> True. Lamu yan. Hmm. Mana sa ninang. Dapat. So and anyway, uh, anyway, guys, we're encouraging every member to participate in every lecture that we conducted here at IFNG. It will help us a lot, really, especially if you are preparing for your upcoming examinations. Yes. And please take the opportunity, the offers that we are giving you, so that. We are talking to people for you to have those guys, those freebies. So if you're not going to take them, I don't think we will talk to, uh, to them again just to give you freebies. So hopefully you can avail them before they end. So for British Council, I think that's until October 30. So yeah, it's October 30. And so for the speaking application, we have until December 31st. Oh, yeah. For you guys to avail the promotional yeah. offer from the IELTS speaking application. Yeah. It's sayang. If you, if you won't avail it, sayang siya. 
di ba? Kaya ayun. Kaya hopefully, and then our lectures, please attend them. <laughs> And don't forget to like and subscribe our Facebook account and also our YouTube. YouTube. Yes. And of course, in, uh, please support our um, review centers. Our review centers that gives us free lecture because without them, this uh, most of us wouldn't be able to have free information with regard to IELTS. So, oh, okay. I think Queen M is ready now. So, Queen M. You may take the floor. <laughs> you may take the floor. Okay, so for tonight, we're going to do something that I have not done in IFNG. <clears throat> we're going to talk about visa processing. Well, this is from a third person point of view, considering that I do not represent any recruitment agency. I am not representing any visa consultancy. So this is an objective discussion. How you can possibly go to US, UK, Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And what are the visas available in these first world countries or English speaking countries? There's fiance visa, spouse visa, working visa, immigrant visa, student visa. What else have I forgotten? Immigrant, working, student, fiance, spouse. There you go. Now, I'm going to give a free buy one, take 30 unlimited for life review package for tonight and the mechanics the mechanics are actually very simple number one kindly tag as many friends as you can well i am looking at my phone because this is how i'm going to monitor who is the most active participant for tonight who can tag as many friends that he or she can and number two there will be audience participation from time to time. So I'm going to ask for volunteers whom I can possibly assess using the various immigration criteria like age, educational attainment, work experience, availability of relatives in those countries mentioned, availability of partner or spouse. And then we're also going to talk about the English proficiency requirements. So this is going to last until 11 p.m. What are you waiting for? Kindly tag as many friends as you can. This is not just for nurses. Let me clarify that one. This is intended for anyone for that matter who wants to go to US, UK, Ireland, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Okay, so for now, we already have 127 live viewers on Facebook. Hopefully, the others are going to join us. If somewhere in the middle you feel that you have to go somewhere or you have to sleep or you have to go back to your work or duty, do not fret because this video is going to be available on IF. And G, it will be shared right away, right after the two-hour discussion. But what's the difference when you're going to participate live and you're going to watch the recorded version? Well, for the live and interactive version, who knows? You might be the one that I'm going to assess later on. Remember, you can ask questions related to visa application in those six countries mentioned. The recorded version, though, it's equally informative. It's just that when you ask, I cannot answer anymore. So, hello, Philippines. Hello, world. Hello to all global Pinoys out there. Finally, we're going to talk about something that's bigger than IELTS. And what's bigger? Visa application. Apparently, you are taking an English examination because you want to apply for a visa. I mean, no one wants to take an English examination just because this person wants to know his or her level of proficiency in the language. There is an even more important reason why we are here preparing for, in, uh, preparing for an English test and brushing up on our English. Now, I'm going to share my screen as we take a look at the various visas, okay? The various countries covered for tonight. Share. Mm -hmm. Slide show from beginning. Okay. Remember, I'm looking at my phone from time to time because I'm going to monitor who's the most active attendee for tonight. If ever we have two attendees or three attendees who can tag the most number of friends, 
No problem with that. I'm feeling generous for tonight. Now, let's take a look at these top countries. Well, it says for nurses, but like what I've said, even if you are not a nurse, you are not a healthcare professional, you can still participate in tonight's discussion. So there's the United States of America, perhaps the most popular option because it is the ultimate destination. And I'm not saying that because I am pro-USA. It's just that for all of my reviewees, ever since I started teaching in 2006, it's usually my reviewees who are in the United States who are able to buy their own house and lot at the same time own their car in just a few years time. Now, there's the United Kingdom of Great Britain in Northern Ireland, which is, by the way, the fastest in deploying the healthcare workers. Ireland is equally popular as it's also located in Europe. And Ireland is more flexible in IELTS and OET requirement. At the same time, the cost of living in Ireland is lower compared to the UK. What does lower cost of living mean? Chances are you can save more. Let's move on to the three countries that are wide open for all sorts of professionals. If you are not a healthcare worker, perhaps Australia, New Zealand, and Canada are ideal for you. What about Australia? For the longest time, Australia was temporarily closed, temporarily closed because of COVID-19. From March 2020 up until recently, Australia did not admit foreign, uh, foreign applicants. But because of herd immunity in the top territories and provinces in Australia, namely New South Wales, where Sydney is located, plus Victoria, where Melbourne is located, Australia now has announced that, oh yes, this is the moment that people have been waiting for. People can now go to Australia and pursue their visa application. New Zealand, is perhaps the least populated, but considered the most livable of these six countries. And what about Canada? Well, Canada does not have limit regarding the number of visas that they are going to distribute. In fact, Canada welcomes everyone because Citizenship and Immigration Canada, it's like the Bureau of Immigration of Canada already announced that they'll be needing a total of 1 million immigrants. And apparently, Tagalog is one of the most popular languages in Canada because a lot of immigrants came from the Philippines. Now, let's take a look at the different types of visas. Well, a lot of people are interested in working visa. I mean, who does not want guaranteed employment when you arrive in these countries? It's just that not all of these countries issue working visa. There are also countries that issue other types of visas if your profession is regulated. Say, for instance, you are a registered nurse. You cannot apply for, uh, apply for a working visa immediately in some of these countries. That's why our discussion for tonight will focus on the nitty gritty details per country. Let's take a look at the third. Uh, let's take a look at the second option, immigrant visa. Perhaps this is the most popular considering that you can bring your spouse, you can bring your partner, you can bring your kids. The entire family is granted permanent residency. And what does this mean? You can stay indefinitely in that country and you're just one step away from being a citizen. You're just one step away from having that British passport, Canadian passport, American passport, and so on. Now, we understand that working visa and immigrant visa have plenty of requirements. Hmm. If you're worried about your age or you have not finished college or you haven't had any working experience, hmm, student visa is the best option because it does not discriminate 
Anyone can literally apply for a student visa. But why are we going to include this in our discussion if anyone can actually apply for that? Well, that is because for a student visa application, you have to make sure that the program or the course that you're going to enroll in must be related to your current work experience or your educational background. Because the thing is, it serves as further education. Well, the last option though, if really it is difficult for you to look for an employer or a sponsor, then why not look for the love of your life? You can look for a fiance or a spouse who is going to sponsor your visa application. Well, I have just typed it here, but tourist, uh, tourist visa won't be the focus of tonight's discussion because apparently you cannot stay there forever when you're just on tourist visa. Let us move on to the various English examinations and in which countries are they accepted? Now, let me just take a look at some of the few questions before I tackle these English examinations and the countries that accept them. Meanwhile, I noticed that someone's microphone is not on mute. Honestly, this platform is challenging for us because we cannot see the faces of the attendees. So please make it easier for the instructor by turning your microphone on mute mode. Okay, hello to the 200 FB live viewers. Let me take a look at one question here. The question came from JD Onaliera. Maybe it's Arellano na binaliktad. Isn't it that student visa is very expensive? Well, it's true that it's expensive. It's just that if you can go abroad in two to three months, versus waiting for like two years for your visa to be processed, let's admit it, not everyone is impatient. There are people who want to go abroad as soon as they can. And in fact, if you process your papers now, you can actually be there in February of next year. I'm just not sure if there are intakes available for January as intakes are not exactly the same for all schools, but yes, student visa is ideal for people who want to go abroad ASAP, regardless of the circumstances. Well, they can afford the tuition fee, so I stop them from pursuing student visa application. Okay, who else have other questions apart from J.D. Arellano? Okay, so far the others have no questions and now, wow, we have 221 FB live viewers. Let's take a look at the most popular English examination, none other than the International English Language Testing System, which was introduced in 1989. Oh yes, IELTS is 31 years old already. No wonder why it is accepted in all of the countries mentioned here, US, Canada, UK, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, at the same time, it's also required if you are a teacher planning to work in Singapore or the United Arab Emirates. There are also European universities and colleges that require IELTS if you're planning to study there. PTE or the Pearson Test of English, if I may promote, is for me the best English examination. Okay, don't take it against me. We are offering a review for all these English examinations that you see here, but why is it that we are promoting PTE? Number one, you are assessed by artificial intelligence, okay? No human intervention. There is no examiner. So if it's artificial intelligence, it's very objective. Now you're going to ask me what types of technology use AI. Example number one is Siri. Imagine Siri is always accurate whenever you talk to Siri, right? Say, for instance, you say, Siri, what time is it now? Siri is going to respond, oh, it's nine in the evening. If you're going to ask, Siri, convert 1,000 US dollars to Philippine pesos, Siri is going to reply automatically. Now, another example of a technology which makes use of AI or artificial intelligence is Waze. Remember, Waze can actually predict quite a lot. Say, for instance, in 300 meters, turn right, heavy traffic reported ahead. 
police, right? Next to you, something like that. So if it's assessed by a computer and not a human being, PTE is actually the fairest of them all. And it's also the fastest because the results are out in less than 24 hours. So if you are the type of person who is very anxious, you don't want to spend three to 13 sleepless nights just for you to wait for your results to be out, then PTE is the best option. It's just that PTE is not accepted in all applications, but I'm talking to Sir Mark Flores of Pearson. They're already applying for recognition in various institutions. So I am fervently praying that the day will come that even UK and MC will accept PTE, or who knows, Citizenship and Immigration Canada might accept PTE in the future. But for now, you can use PTE to apply for various programs in the United States of America. And actually, it's the most popular English examination down under in both Australia and New Zealand. TOEFL is older than the IELTS, and it's an American product. No wonder why TOEFL is widely accepted in the United States. In fact, there are certain states in America that don't accept other English examinations. It's just TOEFL. At the same time, there are certain professions that require TOEFL. Like if you're a physical therapist, if you are a pharmacist and you're going to the United States of America, you don't have other options. It's just TOEFL that you are supposed to take. Well, OET gained popularity in the last few years, and this one became one of the world's most recognized English examination in 2015 and 2016, because that was when the United Kingdom Nursing and Midwifery Council and MBI, Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland, Australia's APRA, New Zealand's Nursing Council, accepted OET. Now, if you're going to ask me, if your visa application accepts OET, go for OET. It might be twice as much, uh, twice as expensive as the IELTS, but the chances of making it are relative, uh, the chance of making it is usually higher. Like what I've emphasized earlier, some people don't mind spending more if it will help them or help them reach their target destination sooner rather than later. What about self-help? This might be new for some of you, especially for those who are not applying for a visa in going to Canada. But what is CELPIP, Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program? And FYI, CELPIP is an examination that's accepted exclusively in Canada. What if you are not yet decided which country you're going to? and take IELTS because IELTS is the only one accepted in all of these destinations. But if you are sure of the type of visa that you're going to apply for, that's perhaps when it might be a sound idea to consider the other English examinations. Now, we're done with the various visas, the destinations, and the English examinations. Let us take a look at the selling points per country. Okay. So far, it's J.D. Arleano who keeps on asking uh, questions. I am still waiting for the others to ask. And J.D. asked another question. Is CELPIP required for nurses in Canada? Well, CELPIP is a type of examination that you can take when you are applying for immigrant status or permanent residency. But when you are already in Canada, it does not mean that you can automatically work as a nurse. There are required programs like certain uh, provinces in Canada want you to study first for like two years before you can function as a registered nurse. And by that time, you're not going to use CELPIP anymore. So I repeat, CELPIP is for immigrant visa application or for permanent residency application, but you cannot use it to register as a nurse in Canada. Now, one by one, let us take a look at these six countries. And I'll start with New Zealand. As many as those who are interested in going to New Zealand, kindly type me in the comments section. 
I want to see how many of our attendees for tonight are targeting New Zealand. May I see how many are targeting New Zealand? There is a slight delay. So if this is done live, when I talk, the comments don't appear right away. Okay? Am I talking to just JD? JD is the same person responding. Okay, so we have Vivian Manalo. We have Ian Maape, Judy Ann. By the way, if you are totally undecided, then you can type me in all six countries whenever I ask. There is no penalty here. It's not as if it's multiple choice with only one correct answer. This is actually a multiple response sort of question. Okay? Let's talk about New Zealand. New Zealand before COVID-19 was actually one of the fastest in the world when it comes to visa processing. If you are applying for student visa, the average processing time of New Zealand is blank. Like what I've said, I'm expecting participation because in the Philippines now, it's past 9 p.m. I want to make sure that you are still awake while attending this discussion. Let's fill in the blanks, guys. New Zealand student visa processing lasts for about blank. Kindly type in your guesses. How do you think or how long do you think is the average visa processing time when you're going to New Zealand? I'll wait for the responses on the Facebook comments section. Yes, I'm sure there are those uh, present in the Zoom meeting room. It's just that I prefer to look at the comments on the Facebook comment section because there are 238 live viewers right now. Okay, so Grace thought it's three to four months. What about the others? Gina thought it's a month. Rajalyn, four months. Julie, Luglug, six months. Saren, one month. Judy Ann, three months. April, six months. But why is it that I, did, I haven't stopped yet? Because no one gave me the correct answer so far. But now, here's... I, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to say this. Herecho? Herecho? Jerecho? But he or she got it right. I cannot... I identify from the profile pic, but it seems to me that uh, Jared's show right here is a male. Two weeks, that's the average visa processing time for you to go to New Zealand under a student visa application. And they're saying, huh, why that fast pre-COVID-19? Imagine, New Zealand is also the least populated. If you're going to look at these six countries, Question, which country is the most populated in the world? None other than China with approximately 1.4 billion people. Number two, it's India with 1.2 billion people. The third most populous country in the world is the United States of America. I'm not really sure if China and India are open for immigration, considering that they're already dealing with overpopulation. Now, USA is open, but not for everyone. USA prioritizes healthcare workers. Why? Because majority of the healthcare workers in America are already in their retirement age. Let's take a look at my history as an IELTS reviewer. When I started teaching IELTS in 2006, that was when a lot of universities had 30 sections for nursing in just one year level, 100 sections, even 50 sections, because these people during that time were interested to go to the United States of America. So what's the average age of nurses in America during that time? Let's admit it that, that nurses back then were not really young. So 35 to 45 years old. That was 2005, 2006. Do the math, guys. How long ago? That was like 15 years ago. Right. So add 15 to the average age of 35 to 45. Now that it's 2021, the average age of healthcare workers in America, 50 to 60 years old. 
in a few years time they need an entirely new breed of healthcare workers that is why usa is looking for up to 1 million healthcare workers in the next few years let me emphasize that one U.S. is one of those countries hard hit by COVID-19, so they need health workers to come in. So now you understand why U.S. is open for healthcare workers, but not necessarily for other types of professionals. What about the next most populated country in the six that you see here on the list? It's the United Kingdom. And how many people are in the U.K.? Approximately 65 million. But this is ironic. Why? The UK is one of the smallest English-speaking countries, but it's also one of the most populated. No wonder why in the United Kingdom, the cost of living is high. Why? For a very small country with limited resources, with limited land, a lot of people are competing for the limited resources. So that's one of the reasons why the cost of living in the UK is relatively high. The nurses who are in the UK, especially the entry-level nurses, if they don't if they don't spend much, they can save up to 40 to 50,000 pesos per month. Question: Are you satisfied? Are you happy with 40,000 to 50,000 savings per month in Philippine pesos? Let me see the comments section. Are you happy with 40,000 to 50,000 pesos monthly, uh, I mean, savings per month. May I see? Oh, Jericho Palasi, Jericho Show. Okay, Aryan Law said no. You might be thinking, grabe naman si Aryan, not happy with 40,000 to 50,000, but you have to respect Aryan. Some people can save up to 40,000 to 50,000 per month in the Philippines. That's why they're going abroad because they want to provide for their family's needs and wants. Let me clarify that, not just needs, but also wants. If there is a country that can offer you more will allow you room for more savings, then why not consider that country, right? But now you're going to ask, but how come if nurses are only saving up to 40,000 to 50,000 uh, 50, pesos per month as an entry-level nurse in the UK, then how come it's a very popular option and a lot of people are going there? We have to understand that UK is the fastest in deploying healthcare professionals. But Honestly, I think this is a temporary pit stop for these nurses. They are not really planning to stay, or not all of them are planning to stay there for the rest of their lives. Some of them might want to apply in going to the United States while they are in the UK. Well, USA visa processing takes quite some time. So at least while waiting, they are earning British pounds as compared to working in the Philippines overworked yet underpaid, they would rather work in the UK while waiting for their US visa. So now we've identified the population of USA, 325 million people. UK, around 65 million people. It also prioritizes the healthcare professionals. There are around 15 healthcare workers, 15 types of healthcare workers allowed to apply in the UK. What about the third most populous country in the list? It's not other than Canada. But what is the irony? UK is one of the smallest, but one of the most populated. Canada is the second largest country in the world, but one of the least densely populated. Can someone tell me which country is the biggest? It's not USA, it's not Canada not even China and India. Will you please guess which country is the biggest in the world? I'm looking at the comment section now. While waiting for the comments, Kim Allen Reyes is asking, what about pharmacists? Do they have a good career in those countries? Oh yes, Kim Allen Reyes. Because just a few days ago, I was able to talk to Miss Jenny, our TOEFL reviewee who passed, who aced her TOEFL. And she told me that, once you become a pharmacist in the United States of America, you can earn around 50 to 55 US dollars per hour. Wow, 50 to 55 US dollars per hour. Do the mathematics. 
Okay, that's not even the average entry level for nurses in the U.S. around 27 USD per hour, but for pharmacists, whopping 50 to 55. And when you are promoted, obviously that figure will go up. Okay, thank you, Rose Ann Manabat, Ronald Beldad. The correct answer is Russia. Russia is the biggest country in the world. Canada is the second largest in how many people are in Canada? More than 35 million people. So imagine, it is one of the biggest countries in the world, but the least one of the least densely populated. If you can only imagine, how big is Canada? More than 9 million square kilometers of land, but 35 million people. What about the Philippines? The Philippines is one of the most populated countries in the world, number 12 in the world. And how many people are in the Philippines? When Catriona won in 2018, she said 104 million Filipinos, but that was 2018. Three years later, if I'm not mistaken, we're at 108 million now. So in just a matter of three years, we were able to add 4 million to our current population. And when did this balloon? This year and last year, the COVID babies. Oh yes, 30,000 Filipinos might have died from COVID-19, but because the parents were just staying at home last year, for the most part of PCQ, a lot of COVID babies were born. So now we're going to deal with that overpopulation. So how when, when I look at the statistics, the Philippines is just 300,000 square kilometers. But what about Canada? 9 million square kilometers. So I asked myself, I'm going to do the mathematics. How many Philippines will fit in one Canada? And the calculator told me that it's 31 Philippines in just one Canada. Imagine that Canada is 31 times bigger than the Philippines but we are three times more populated than Canada. So what is the valid conclusion here? The Filipinos are best and uh, best in reproduction. Okay, mahilig ang mga Pinoy for that matter. Now, let's go back to our topic. Canada is one of the most is one of the biggest but with few people. It's just that they have plenty of land to accommodate more people. Now, what about Australia? Australia is also one of the largest in the world. But how many people are in Australia? More than 20 million, even if it's the fifth largest country in the world. So for a country with vast resources and limited population, it does not come as a surprise why Australia is one of the highest paying countries in the world. And praise God that now Australia announced that they're going to reopen their borders. Hmm. What about New Zealand? This is the interesting fact. New Zealand is just a little smaller than the Philippines, 260,000 uh, 260, square kilometers. Now, here's my question. If the Philippines and New Zealand are approximately of the same size, question, how many people are in New Zealand? If in the Philippines, there are approximately 108 million people. Let us take a look. How many people are in New Zealand? I'm looking at the comments section now. Who can guess how many people are in New Zealand? Oh, I was actually corrected. I, I stand corrected because Ronnie Garay Lisera and Camille Villanueva Milievo, they, they're doing their research. They're telling me that the Philippines now has 111 million people. So imagine, we added 7 million to our population in just a matter of what? In just a matter of three years. Sir, pa shout out po watching here in Pearl's Clinic, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I can actually do the shout out, but I cannot read your name because your name is in Arabic. But hello there. Okay. Sean Laguda, 5 million. That 
is correct. Approximately 5 million. Imagine New Zealand and Philippines, approximately the same size. Philippines, 300,000 square kilometers. New Zealand, 260,000 square kilometers. The Philippines, 110, 111 million people. New Zealand, 5 million. No wonder why New Zealand is wide open accepting all sorts of professionals. And the student visa application is very fast, pre-COVID-19. Now, an interesting tidbit. Did you know that in New Zealand, there are more animals than human beings? So when I went to Auckland, New Zealand in 2014, Miss Abby of Commonwealth Visa Experts invited me to travel all the way to Wellington. So Auckland is the biggest city with one million people, but Wellington is the official capital. So I asked her, so Miss Abby, how are we going to travel from Auckland to Wellington? Are we going to take the plane? She told me, oh no, sir, we have to take the bus because I want you to see the beauty the picturesque scenery of New Zealand. And so I asked her, so how long are we going to travel? And she told me it's approximately 12 hours. And I was like, what, 12 hours? And then we're just staying on the bus. But I tell you that was the best 12 hours of my life. Why? Because when you are in New Zealand, it's as if you are in a Hollywood uh, movie setting. For those who do not know, uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Hobbit, they, they were uh, shot in New Zealand. From Auckland, 30 minutes later, when I'm looking at the people around me or my surroundings, I cannot see human beings anymore. And then when I looked to my right, I saw one person walking. When I looked to my left, I saw another person walking. When I looked to my right, I was shocked. I saw approximately 100 cows. And so my uh, this person in me, this inquisitive person in me got the better of me. So I asked the driver, excuse me, mister, how many cows are here in New Zealand? And the driver responded by saying, oh, we have 11 million cows. And I was like, wow. The humans here are just 5 million, but they have 11 million cows. Now, a few minutes later, when I looked to the right-hand side, I saw one person walking. When I looked at the left-hand side, another person walking, but when I looked at the right-hand side this time, approximately a thousand sheep. That's why I was not able to stop. I just had to ask the driver, excuse me, mister, how many sheep do we have here in New Zealand? And he responded by saying, it's 31 million. And I was like, wow, animal pala tong bansang to. Literal. Why? How many humans? 5 million. How many cows? 11 million. But how many sheep do we have in New Zealand? 31 million. So in the next election, if ever Ang maglalaban ay tao, baka, and sheep. Mananalo yung sheep because there are 31 million of them. Now you understand why New Zealand is fast in visa processing because they need human beings. In fact, another selling point of New Zealand, when you are there, you are a mother, you give birth, New Zealand is going to pay you. Why? They are celebrating because now you are able to contribute to their population. It's as if when someone gives birth, the nurse calls the government, hello government, nandagdagan na naman tayo ng isang tao. Now, the government of New Zealand will say, rejoice and be glad. Now we have another person added to our population. Bigyan na ng maternity benefits ang nana. It's actually like that in New Zealand. Why? They have a lot of resources. They have limit. They have a few people. No wonder why they're wide open and they can accommodate as many people as they can. And I'm telling you, New Zealand has one of the best governments in the world. If you look at their COVID response, oh, that's just fantastic. They are able to think not just one step ahead, but 10 steps ahead. That's why for the longest time, people in New Zealand were not actually wearing masks. That is why if you want the most livable conditions in the world, with or without COVID, if you are impatient, you want to go abroad, ASAP, 
then it's New Zealand. What about Australia? Let us talk about this fifth largest country in the world with more than 20 million people, and it's located down under. What's the number one selling point? Plus, Australia by far is one of the highest paying. May I just ask, how many of the, of the attendees for tonight are in Australia right now? Kindly comment me if you are in Australia right now. Well, that's five hours, so it must be three in the morning. But who, who knows? Someone is uh, working on night shift in Australia now. Do we have anyone working in Australia right now? Well, no one, but may I just ask, how many of you have friends in Australia? So I am changing my question. I am not asking who are in Australia right now. My question is, how many of you have friends in Australia right now? Because I have a very important question to ask. So how many of you have friends in Australia? Okay, Camille Villanueva Milievo was the first to respond. Okay, Camille, my question for you, for your friends who are in Australia, do they own a house? Do they own a car? Do they own a lot? L let's wait for Camille to respond because Camille was the very first to say, oh, I have a friend in Australia. Camille? What about your friends in Australia? Do they have their own house? Do they have their own car? Do they have their own lot? Maybe Camille is still typing or she's thinking, hmm, who are my friends in Australia with house, car, and lot? Okay, Camille responded, yes. At least, guys, you know, what we're, what we're talking, what we're discussing here is what? Accurate. If not 100% accurate, close to reality, because I've been mentioning figures, okay, approximations of the population of these countries, and some of the BIB and competitive people were responding, oh, 111 million, 25 million, 4 million, 5 million. At least I am letting you know that I'll do everything in my capacity to take care of my credibility, because for me, credibility is everything. That's why I cannot sell false information. Now, I started, uh, I created my Facebook account in 2008. And when, whenever I check my news feed, I'm looking at someone with a house blessing. These friends of mine who are former Niner reviewees who are able to purchase house, lot, and have their own car, they are just in two destinations, either US or Australia. But between the two, what are the selling points of Australia? Well less crowded, and you can save more. Let's do the mathematics. How much are registered nurses earning in Australia? Okay. For some of our former lecturers and coaches who are now in Australia, they're earning around $40 Australian dollars per hour. Okay. You multiply that by eight working hours per day, I'm saying minimum. Why? Whenever the employer needs someone to render overtime, a Filipino is always preferred. But why a Filipino? Because Filipinos are willing to work at night. Filipinos are willing to work on weekends. Filipinos are willing to work on holidays. And yes, Filipinos are willing to work for two consecutive shifts in one day. Thank you, Philippine hospitals, for preparing our Filipino nurses. Because honestly, that's the kind of work ethics, that's the kind of attitude that foreign employers want from the Filipino workers. That's why I'm saying minimum of eight hours. Plus, multiply that by how many working days in a month. If you work for like five days in a week, that's times 22 days in a month. If you work for six days a week, multiply that by 26 days in a month. What about the exchange rate. 
it's around 34 or 35. Well, it fluctuates, sometimes higher than that, sometimes lower. No wonder why my former lecturer, my former coach, Kim Manarang, who is in Australia right now, is actually earning approximately 220,000 pesos per month. How much can Kim save in a month? At least 50%. Now, question, how many of you want to save minimum? Oh, okay, save hat. I'm using the term save, not how many of you want to save minimum of 110,000 pesos per month? Let me see. Let me take a look at your comments. Okay. So Anne de la Cruz just commented. She knows someone earning 35 per hour. That is true. In the case of Kim, around 40 per hour. Remember, not all hospitals pay the same. But 35 to 40, not bad at all. Okay, imagine 110,000 pesos as monthly savings versus 40 to 50,000 pesos per month. Now, let me tell you the story of Kim. It's not as if Australia was actually her first choice. To be honest with you, she first went to UK. But because of limited savings, she transferred to Ireland. Now, after Ireland, she went back to the Philippines last year during COVID-19. And then she applied for her New Zealand. <clears throat> uh, she registered as a nurse in New Zealand. But why New Zealand and not Australia right away? That is because New Zealand and Australia have reciprocity. If you're a nurse in Australia, you can also become a registered nurse in New Zealand. If you're a registered nurse in New Zealand, you can also become a registered nurse in Australia. But because things are a lot cheaper in New Zealand than in Australia, what she did was to apply first as a nurse in New Zealand. That's why she spent less. And earlier this year, she flew all the way to Australia and look at her now, saving as much as 110,000 pesos per month. You might be saying, oh, that might be an isolated case. But come on, guys. What about savings? It's actually up to us. If we keep on spending uh, beyond our means, obviously, you cannot save as much. But what's good with Australia, it will maximize your potential to become a millionaire in Philippine pesos sooner rather than later. So once again, selling point of New Zealand, it's wide open for all professions arguably the most livable country in the world and one of the fastest in visa processing. Australia, yes, it might be expensive to process a visa in going there, but I tell you, it is worth the investment because in Australia, you don't just earn much, but you're able to save much. And Australia, like New Zealand, is open for all sorts of professionals, not just healthcare workers. Now, here comes Canada, which is always one of the top three most famous destinations. Why? Well, Canada never closed during the time, uh, time of COVID-19. So Canada still admitted immigrants last year and this year. At the same time, Canadian schools never closed. They kept on accepting student visa applicants in 2020 and 2021. That's why, praise God for Canada, a lot of visa consultancies in the Philippines did not close because instead of just focusing or devoting their energy and time to New Zealand and Australia, Canada kept them alive. Now, a lot of people want to go to Canada, but because I want participation, may I ask you guys, kindly type on the comments section, why are you interested in going to Canada? Is it because you have friends over there? Or you heard that Canada is still open despite COVID-19? Or perhaps you heard that Canada is looking for skilled workers like butchers, welders, electricians, linemen, mechanics, and the like. Or maybe because you want to experience snow during Christmas season. Let me see your reasons. 
Okay. So JD here responded, oh, because yeah, you can actually bring your family to Canada. Well, that's true. But in other countries, you can also bring your family members. What about the others? Okay, Eunice Ramos responded, better quality of life. Well, maybe better compared to the Philippines, but arguably the quality of life in Australia and New Zealand is also... Uh, at par with the quality of life in Canada. Okay. Uh, Sied Adam Alhabsi said it's easy. Well, I, I'm not really sure which easy are you pertaining to. Are you saying that the life there is easy or is it easy to apply for a visa? But if it's easy to apply for a visa, for a student visa, yes. Uh, easy way of life, uh, not quite. What about Micah? Okay, Micah said, oh, there are friends over there. And this is the reason why Tagalog is one of the most popular languages in Canada. And literally in almost every corner in Canada, you can find a Filipino. Okay, Micah Velosa said they have nice houses. Well, there are, there are also nice houses in Australia and in other countries. In the UK, you can only have a nice house when you're a, a multimillionaire, so to speak. But because there's plenty of land in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, you can really put up a humongous house for that matter. Anjo, I have a family in Canada. Okay, Sheila Amante Palerasho, fastest to give visa. If it's student visa, I'd say yes. Uh-huh. What else? Elisa, oh, Canada is open. That is actually true. Grace Rico Hermoso, quality of living. I agree with you. Vivian Manalo, healthcare is one of their priority. That is also true. If you noticed, majority of you gave sensible answers. But now, what are the three visas in entering Canada? Okay. The first one, there's immigrant visa. Number two, there is student visa. And number three, there is working visa. Who are granted working visa when going to Canada? If you are a caregiver applying for a live-in caregiver program. If you are a skilled worker, namely butcher, welder, electrician, lineman, mechanic, cook, you can apply and be granted working visa by the Canadian government. However, if you are a professional, say for instance, you are an accountant, a teacher, an architect, engineer, you are not granted working visa. So what two options do you have? There's immigrant visa and student visa. FYI, not everyone is qualified to apply for immigrant visa, but definitely everyone can apply for a student visa. So what is my suggestion for you guys? Before you decide, I need you first to be assessed by a visa consultant that processes for New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and have your points assessed. It's important that you are informed of your points. Why? Because for Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, the higher the immigration points, the lower, or rather, the higher the immigration points, the more chances that you will be invited. It's not as if, okay, I want to migrate to Canada. I'll start my visa application. There are no guarantees if you want to be an immigrant of these three countries, okay? So student visa is the sure ball pathway. Later, I'll focus on UK, Ireland, and USA for healthcare professionals. But because this discussion is for everyone, like literally everyone, let's take a look first at immigrant visa for C, Canada, A, Australia, and Z, New Zealand. I hope you have your pen and paper with you. If you don't have your pen and paper with you, perhaps your mobile phone or any gadget, because we're going to take note of vital information that will help you in deciding, hmm, should I apply for immigrant visa or should I consider other types of visa instead? Now, I just looked at the time. It's 10 p.m. We have one hour left for our visa processing discussion. Let's begin with age. If you are 21 to 35 years old, expect that you're going to get maximum points for age if you're migrating to Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. 
The older you are, the lower the immigration points. In fact, in Canada, for every year added to your age, minus one point. Now, what if you're going to ask me, sir, I'm 49 years old already, but I want to migrate to Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. How many points am I going to get for age? The answer is zero. Now, you're going to tell me. Grabe naman sila, sir. Napaka-discriminating naman. Why are they giving me zero point for age if I'm 49 years old? Well, the truth of the matter is that you are relatively old. In Filipino, medyo malapit ka ng uh, kunin ni Lord, no? You are in the pre-departure area. Remember, these countries expect that when they grant you immigrant status, you can contribute to their economy. They can maximize you for several decades. So if you are 21 to 35 years old, they're expecting that you will still serve their country for two to three more decades. That's why for immigrant visa application, you will be getting the maximum points for age if you're roughly 21 to 35 years old. If you are in your early 40s, I am not saying that you cannot migrate to Canada, but you have to redeem yourself by getting more points in the other criteria. Okay? So now, we are done with age. Later, I'm going to ask for volunteers. Like, how? Uh, who wants to be assessed? I'm going to compare three people later on. And of the three, who has the highest chance of going to Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Hmm, that's exciting because we're going to look for volunteers later. Now, number two, educational attainment. The higher the degree, the higher the immigration points that these three countries are going to give you. So apparently, if you have PhD, that's maximum points after PhD, master's degree, bachelor's degree, and so on. Class, these countries put premium on education. With more years of study, the higher the immigration points. Some of us here are parents. And I understand the frustration of parents when K-12 program was implemented because that means, say, another two years. Additional two years burdens on the part of the parents because they have to allot money for the allowance, the tuition fee of these kids. And let's admit it, not all kids are honest, right? Some of them ask more money than what they actually need, saying, oh, we have a project. I need money for this and that. It's just that, who knows? Some of them are not spending it wisely. Class, the truth of the matter is a lot of the Filipino professionals of our age are not usually given the maximum points or the points intended for a bachelor's degree because we lack two years. The advantage of those who underwent the K-12 program, they are given more points because of the two years added to their curriculum. So if you're a parent right now, okay, it might be frustrating for you, but you'll get it someday. Eventually, when it's time for your daughter or son to apply for a visa, your son or daughter is going to get extra points because of the added two years, thanks to the K-12 to program. Class, just because you have master's degree doesn't mean that they're going to award the points. You have to submit the complete requirements like diploma of your master's degree, transcript of records of your master's degree. If you have master's units, no additional points. You must have completed the degree. Class, I want to emphasize the higher the degree, the higher the immigration points, more chances that you will be invited. And what, does, uh, what is it that these countries do? They compare your qualifications uh, versus the other professionals of exactly the same occupation. That's why later I'll be looking for three nurses who are going to volunteer because I will assess you in front of the more than 200 Facebook Live viewers. Now, let us move on to work experience. They only count work experience that is related to your profession. So I have a question for you. What if you are a registered nurse by profession. However, your work experience is 
in the BPO industry as a call center agent. Do you think that Canada, Australia, New Zealand are going to give points for your work experience in the BPO industry, even if you are a registered nurse? May I see your answers. I'll just repeat my question. If you are a registered nurse, but you are working in the BPO industry as a customer service representative, do you think that Canada, Australia, New Zealand are going to consider your work experience? Yes or no? The answer is no. If you are a registered nurse, they will accept work experience that has something to do with what? Patient interaction. So what's patient interaction? Class, you are working in the hospital. You are a private duty nurse, a, a community health nurse. Let's say, uh, what else? Clinic nurse, a school nurse, company nurse, because there's patient interaction. But if you are working as a BPO agent, I am sorry, that work experience won't count. By the way, it doesn't matter if you have a work gap. What they do is consider all of the relevant working experience and total the number of years. So it doesn't matter if it's just one employer, two employers, three employers. So they are going to award you highest points if you are able to accumulate 10 years of working experience. So I'm not saying that you need to work for 10 years before you can qualify for immigrant visa. What I'm saying is minimum of one year work experience to qualify but with more years of work experience, the higher the immigration points. Now, ladies and gentlemen, age, they prefer younger applicants. Educational attainment, they prefer those with higher degrees. Number three, those with more years of working experience. Okay, what about number four? How many of you do not, okay, do not have relatives in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, but still you want to go there? May I see how many of you do not have relatives in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, but still want to go there? While well, waiting for the answer, here is a question from Grace Nell Rico Hermoso. What about volunteer nurse? Volunteer nurse is totally fine for as long as you are provided with certificate of employment, indicating that you are a paid, uh, you are an employee. Sorry for the word paid. You are an employee because some hospitals are willing to give that kind of certification. Okay? So all you need is to make friends with HR because the choice of words is very important. Now, here's another question from Eliza Ayanko. What about clinical processing? Well, it depends if you have patient interaction. If there is patient interaction, okay, that is considered valid. But if there is no patient interaction, that won't count, okay? Uh-huh. So I, I'm seeing a lot of people here responding, me, 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 I want to go there even if I don't have relatives. Well, actually, it's possible for you to go there without relatives. It's just that you won't earn the extra point. So how many points are we talking about? If you have a first degree relative, let me clarify that. Not second degree, not third degree, but it's first degree relative. What is the definition of first degree relative of these countries? Mother, father, brother, sister, first degree aunt, first degree uncle, meaning to say the brother or sister of your parent, first degree, uh, degree grandmother, first degree grandfather, meaning to say the parent of your parent, automatically that is considered a first degree relative, not your cousin, okay? If your first degree relative over there is either a permanent resident or citizen, then you may possibly qualify for the added points. But why am I using the term possibly? That's because you need their cooperation. You need documents from them, like what? Their green card or their certificate of permanent residency. Because let's admit it, for some of us, we have relatives there, but we don't want to have utang na loob. 
sometimes we don't want to communicate with them. You want to go there on your own. But think of it this way. You're going to get extra points if your relatives cooperate in the process. So now let's forget about the past as we move on to the future, let's make friends with our relatives that we have not communicated with in the last five years, in the last 10 years. All you need is their certificate of permanent residency and a few documents for you to earn the added points. Okay, clarification. You are not required to have relatives there, but once you have a first degree relative who is a citizen or permanent resident and willing to share with you some of their documents, you can use that in the application. Now, someone asked, sir, my brother is there, but my brother is on student visa. Can I claim the additional points? The answer is no. Let me specify the status of your first degree relative there must be permanent resident or citizen. Okay, now, here comes a very interesting criteria, okay? Partner or spouse. Let's define partner. Partner meaning to say boyfriend or girlfriend. Spouse meaning to say you are married and you have proof of your uh, communion. So, the million dollar question is, how many people tonight do not have a partner, single and willing to mingle? Okay, comment me. How many of you here are single, willing to mingle? Okay, RV Amogi, second degree relative, not allowed. Okay, Anne de la Cruz, oh, me. Anne is looking for a possible partner or possible spouse. Okay, look at this one. Uh, Anne, I'm sure, is a female. JD, I cannot um, decipher based on the profile picture if JD is male or female. But looking at the next person who commented, James, single with an emoji. Na, hey, hey, hey. Okay, Anne de la Cruz, I'd like you to meet James next on. James Nexon, I'd like you to meet Anne de la Cruz. Why? What is it that the Catholic Church said? Blessed are the singles, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's just that in visa application, this might not be this might not be applicable. Why? In visa application, especially if it's immigrant status in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, blessed are those who are taken, for they will earn extra points. Ah, ganun pala yun. So what's our event for tonight? The event for tonight is not really free info session on visa processing, okay? What is our event for tonight? Uh... Matchmaking, Charot. Now, let me clarify that one. If you are married, all you need to present is the marriage certificate. But if you are not married, so can I bring my boyfriend with me? Can I bring my girlfriend with me? By all means, yes. It's just that you need to have a lot of requirements to submit in order to prove that this person is really your partner and not just someone you met on IFNG tonight, October 27, 2021. So what are these documents that must prove that indeed you are partners? So affidavit coming from uh, both sides, the parents are going to sign, okay, uh, this is to certify that let's say uh, Gladys Lacanilao and uh, Marvin Depano. Joke lang yun, sir, Marbs and Miss Glads. Huh? I, I'm just using examples uh, in the affidavit that the parents or the family of both sides are going to signify that indeed the two are in a uh, relationship. What else? Pictures of uh, both of you in various settings in different circumstances. That's why they will automatically know if these pictures are just fabricated because say for instance, you might have the same haircut or the same uh, body size. So when you submit pictures of you together, 
you must show pictures of you of both of you like five years ago uh, short hair long hair uh 150 pounds versus 200 pounds you have to prove to them that indeed you are in a long-term relationship and it's not something that you established overnight what else proof of billing like PLDT or Globe or Meralco, Maynilad, named after both of you. At the same time, a proof of your of the properties you have purchased. Say, for instance, uh, a car that's named for, uh, like after both of you. What else? Condominium unit, house and lot. What else? You also need to have a joint account. Like both of you are in there and that account needs to have a bank history. So if you're going to think of it, sometimes it's much easier to get married than to uh, push through with your common law relationship application. Now, granting that you have all those requirements, does it mean you will automatically earn points? The answer is no. Your spouse, your partner, needs to take the IELTS general training module. If your partner or spouse is not willing to take IELTS general training module, you don't earn the extra points. That is why. What is my task for you now, guys? Will you please bring out your mobile phone? Call your boyfriend. Call your girlfriend, okay? Call your live-in partner. Hi, babe. Are you willing to come to Canada with me? Oh yes, babe, that's part of our plans. But babe, are you willing to take the IELTS general training module? If your partner refuses to take an English examination, what do you do? Replace your partner. Look for a more cooperative partner. Life is about what? Uh, making sure that you are able to, uh, that, that your partner is useful, right? What's the point of having a good-looking partner if your partner won't help you in your visa application and not willing to take an English examination? So that is the most important question before you go to bed tonight. Ask your partner if he or she is willing to take IELTS general training because if not then uh, your, your relationship ends officially today October 27 2021 now looking at all these that we have there is age educational attainment work experience relatives partner spouse there's one more which is English proficiency Imagine, for age, there's nothing you can do with that. Like, if you are 45, you cannot turn back time. You cannot tell yourself, I should have applied when I was 35, right? For educational attainment, well, it's not too late to pursue master's degree. It's just that for you to earn the extra points, you have to allot at least two years for that. But that means to say minus points for your age if you're already, let's say, 37 or 39. Because for every year added to your age, automatically minus, uh, there will be a deduction for the points. Work experience. What you can actually do is to add years to your work experience and enroll in a master's degree program so it's like two steps forward but one step backward for the age what about relatives if you really don't have relatives there you don't insist oh i forgot to mention this one if you don't have a relative but your partner or spouse has a relative then you the principal applicant will also earn extra points now what if you have two suitors, like right now, right and left, okay? You talk to your suitor on the right-hand side. Hi, uh, do you have a first-degree relative in Canada? The answer is, no, I'm sorry. I do not have a first-degree relative in Canada. Okay, then go to your suitor on the left-hand side and then ask your suitor here, oh, excuse me, uh, do you have a first degree relative in Canada who is a citizen and a permanent resident. And if this person answers, yes, alam nyo na kung sino ang sasagutin. 
your suture on the left hand side. Why? You're hitting two birds with one stone. By saying yes to this lover right here, you are able to earn extra points for partner or spouse and additional points for relatives. Class, you have to be smart. Just because someone is good looking doesn't mean that you're going to submit yourself to this person for the rest of your life. Look for a person who can help you in going to Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. That's how it's supposed, that's how it's supposed to work. Well, English proficiency, sometimes this is the only one that can spell the difference between being granted a visa and being refused a visa. Why? With lower scores, like six in all subtests, yes, you can qualify for immigrant visa application. It's just that it does not guarantee that you're going to have higher immigration points. But if you get minimum of seven in all components, that's more immigration points. How much more if you get eight in all components? I promise, if you get minimum of eight in all subtests of IELTS general training module, you will be granted your immigrant visa ASAP as soon as possible because it's English proficiency that will pull you up. Now, earlier, I promised that I'm going to assess three people for tonight. May I ask, who are or who would like to be assessed? I'm looking for three nurses okay the first three who are going to comment me i am going to assess them for free and later on we're going to judge who among the three of them will be considered by canada australia or new zealand for visa app uh, for invitation to apply or ida okay so the first one is shed shed adam al -Habsi. The second one is Anne de la Cruz, and the third one is J.D. Olnia Lera, or Arellano. Okay. Let me just make sure that all three of them are nurses. Why? Because we are comparing people of the same occupation. It is useless to assess the three of them, if not all of them, belong to exactly the same profession. So, Shed, Anne, and J.D., Will you please verify or confirm that indeed you are a registered nurse? Okay, Shed is a nurse. What about Anne? Is Anne de la Cruz a nurse? I need the response of Anne de la Cruz and J.D. Arellano. Is Anne de la Cruz a nurse? Is J.D. Arellano a nurse? I'm waiting for their response. Anne de la Cruz Okay, J.D. Arellano is a nurse. What about Anne de la Cruz? Later na lang yung sa radiographer because there are not so many uh, radiographers that we can assess, you know? Because when you are going to these countries, it's not as if you apply on your own merit. You're actually compared to the other members of exactly the same occupation. Okay, so Anne already responded, nurse. Okay, let's take a look at the three of them. So there's Shed, there's Anne, and JD. I need you to indicate on the chat box, number one, your age. Number two, your highest educational attainment. Is it PhD? Is it master's, bachelor's degree? Remember, you must have completed the degree. PhD units, master's units, they don't count. Number three, I uh, please indicate the total years of work experience as a nurse with patient interaction. Don't mind the work gap. You can combine all the, all the years of work experience as a registered nurse. And then for the fourth detail, just say yes or no. Yes, if you have a first degree relative in these countries who's a permanent resident or a citizen already, yes or no. And then the fifth one, do you have a partner or a spouse? I repeat, you don't have to get married. You can bring your boyfriend, you can bring your girlfriend with you. You know what? If you're going to tell me, sir, I'm a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community, push mo yan te. They accept same sex partners applying together. So the five details that I need from Anne, Shed, and JD, your age, 
your highest educational attainment, total years of working experience, yes or no, for relatives who are residents or residents or citizens, and yes or no, for partner or spouse. Let me take a look at their response. While waiting for the response, April Christine asks, what is the rationale for earning higher points with having a partner or a spouse? Well, if you're applying for immigrant status in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, it's not enough that you are able to meet the minimum. The explanation is they award higher immigration. They are going to invite those with higher immigration points. So you need all the points that you can get if you want to be assured. The term is assured of immigrant visa. Okay. Uh-huh. What about their responses? I'm waiting for their responses. Okay, so looking at the age, okay, JD is 31, Chef is 41. So if you compare the two of them, JD will automatically have the upper hand when it comes to age because JD is going to get the maximum points for age, but Chef will be getting lower points, okay? What about Anne? Where's Anne? Uh, I, I, okay, Anne is 28 years old. Okay, so maximum. Then education, bachelor's degree for Anne, bachelor's degree for JD. What about Shed? Uh, I'm waiting for the response of Shed. There you go, BSN. So all three of them equal footing. What about the years of working experience? Okay, 14 years in Qatar two years in Saudi, three years in the Philippines. So 14 plus two, 16 plus three, that's 19 years of work experience. Okay, whether it's 10 years or 19 years, same equivalent, okay? Because for 10 years or more, you're already going to get the maximum. What about JD, three months as a nurse? Okay, for now, JD is not qualified to migrate to these countries because the minimum is one year work experience. So JD, if I were you, wait until such time you reach one year before you apply as an immigrant in Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. What about Anne? One year nursing assistant, three months general nurse. Okay. So it seems to me that even if Shed is 41 years old, Shed will get higher immigration points because of the work experience, maximum 10 years. What about relatives? For Anne, first degree, aunt. For JD, no relative. For Shed, no relative. So if you look at the three of them, JD will automatically be in third place, whereas Shed will be in first place because of the work experience. And why is it that Anne is in second place? Because of the availability of relative. This is how it works, okay? What about partner or spouse? So for Anne, no partner. For JD, no partner or spouse. For Shed, also single. Well, uh, you have each other's names. Who knows? You might want. Uh, you might be able to develop something fruitful or something romantic after tonight's free info session on visa processing. Kidding aside, I'm just letting you know. All three of them have equal footing when it comes to partner or spouse. So, if I am the immigration officer or the consul, I am going to pick Shed. For he has accumulated the highest work, uh, the highest immigration point so far. Is there a chance for Ad to catch up? For JD, he or she needs to wait for him or her to have one year work experience. But Ad can easily catch up if Ad can get around eight in each subtest. So I'm not saying eight in each subtest is the minimum. What I'm saying is if you want to get the highest immigration points versus all the other nursing applicants, it is best that you aim for the highest possible band score. Whether it's eight or nine, it doesn't matter because eight or nine for Canadian language benchmark have exactly the same equivalent, okay? What about show money? If you are single, 
Well, around 400,000 pesos. If you're going to bring your spouse with you, around 600,000 pesos. If you're going to bring one kid, well, it just basically adds up. So don't be surprised. For a big family, you might be needing show money or proof of funds of 1 million pesos. It's not as if you're going to spend that money. But this money needs to stay in your account because you need to secure a, certi a bank certificate or a bank document to prove that indeed the person applying has proof of funds and it's under the name of the applicant. So ladies and gentlemen, you've noticed perhaps that it's not easy to apply for immigrant status, but it's worth the wait. Now, what if you're going to tell me, sir, I am 49 years old. I don't have master's degree. I don't have PhD. Most of my years of working are actually not relevant to my profession or occupation. I don't have relatives there. And I have a partner or spouse, but not cooperative. So what do I do? Should I just commit suicide? Last, last, sak, sak, big, te? No. Here is your alternative. Wait a minute. Let's, let's go to student visa. Okay, I think I need to correct this one because this is not US, UK, Ireland. That's actually Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Is there an age limit for a student visa application? The answer is no. Anyone can apply for a student visa. So of all my reviewees ever since I started teaching in 2006, who was the oldest who was granted student visa? 54 years old. So if you think you're 53 now and you're losing hope, just consider my former reviewee as an inspiration at 54. She was granted a student visa going to Australia. What about number two, educational attainment. Even if you have not finished the bachelor's degree, yes, you may qualify for a student visa application. Mm, interesting. Work experience. What if you just uh, recently graduated from college? You can still pursue a student visa application by all means. Rel no relatives, no partner, totally fine. But this is the part where it gets tricky. You must have sufficient proof of funds. If you are studying, uh, you are applying on your own with no other family members joining you in the application, it is safe to have at least 400,000 to 500,000 pesos on your account. But what if you are married? You need more than that. Of these three countries, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, it's usually Australia with the highest requirement for show money. Well, there is some sort of equation, but I'm just letting you know, please prepare a minimum of 500,000 pesos and it could go up to 1 million pesos depending on the number of family members joining you in the application. What about airfare? If it's student visa, it's usually the applicant who pays for the airfare. So how much is this one? Depending on the airline, but most of them charge 20,000 to 30,000 pesos for one way ticket. Why one way? Because you're not going back to the Philippines anytime soon, right? What about accommodation? You are going to spend for your own accommodation. But fortunately, if you have relatives over there, you can save a lot if you're going to stay in their house. If ever you don't have any friend or relative in that destination, these schools will usually assist you in looking for an accommodation, especially for the first few weeks. During, uh, during the adjustment phase, the schools are willing to help you out. Now, you see here, you see it here in all caps, work rights. Are you allowed to work? The answer is yes, approximately 20 hours per week while you are studying. But during semestral break, a summer break, holiday break, you can have as many working hours as you want. But what about post-study work rights? Usually, but not always, if you're studying for one year, you also have one year post-study work rights. So post-study work rights, full-time. What if? You are going to study for two years, then most of the time you're granted two years post-study work rights. That's why some people would rather go for the two-year program because they're allowed to stay in that country for four years. Now, what happens after the post-study work rights? This is when you may apply 
for permanent residency. That's why student visa is a pathway for permanent residency someday. So some of you might be asking, isn't it expensive? Well, yeah, it is expensive. But if you come to think of it, in four years, you can become a permanent resident of that country. Whereas if you applied for immigrant visa, there are no guarantees that you will be invited. Rest assured, not everyone will be granted an immigrant visa, but everyone who has money to pay for the tuition fee will be qualified to apply for a student visa. Now that ends the discussion for all professionals, but this time we're going to focus on the healthcare professionals. So nurses, med tech, rad tech, PT, OT, speech therapist, dietitian, pharmacist. If you are in the medical field, now we're going to talk about working visa for you guys. I have, I have approximately 24 minutes left for our discussion. Is there an age limit? Well, not necessarily. It's not as if they want you to be younger than this or older than that, but they prefer the younger applicants because they can still maximize you for several decades. So I repeat, there is no age limit, but employers usually pick the younger applicants. Work experience is not required by the UK Nursing and Midwifery Council. In fact, when you apply for a visa screen, it doesn't say you need to have this number of years of working experience. It's just that the employers who are not affiliated with CGFNS, the employers who are not affiliated with UK NMC, prefer workers with prior experience because they don't want you going there and then it's your first time to work in that kind of setting so blessed are those with the relevant work experience because that's your cutting edge when you apply for a job the good news majority of the employers majority of the hospitals the nhs trusts reimburse exam expenses now you're going to ask are there agencies or employers that pay up front? They are going to pay for my NCLEX exam, pay for my IELTS review and IELTS examination. Is there such thing? Well, the answer is yes. It's just that they've learned their lesson. Because let's admit it, some of us disappear just like that, like a bubble. When some of you realize that NCLEX might be challenging or when English examination like the IELTS is an obstacle, or the number one stumbling block or hurdle in your visa application, the others disappear somewhere along the way. And these agencies have already spent for your application. How are they going to earn their, th that money back? They can only earn the money that they spent on you or allotted for you if you're able, if you are being deployed to that particular institution or hospital. That's why now, most of them, if not all, offer reimbursement of examination expenses. At least if you spend it on your own for the first part, first few months or first few weeks of your application, there is some sort of personal obligation on the part of the applicant. What about show money? Oh, yes. You, are, you have guaranteed employment here. This is exactly the reason why you are no longer required to present proof of funds because the moment you arrive you already have a job you are not a pabigat so to speak to the government of these three countries us uk and ireland the airfare is usually subsidized by the employer or the agency and they are going to pay for your accommodation for the first month good for some of you because there are employers who a lot two months or three months of budget for your accommodation. After that, you're going to pay for the accommodation on your own. Salary, if we compare the three, US, UK, and Ireland, USA usually offers the highest salary at the same time, savings. Remember, you, you might be paying a lot of taxes in America. But because the gross is just so humongous, it also translates to more savings on the part of the app, on the part of the healthcare worker. 
I'm an active member of Lefora Nursing Group, and I've noticed and I've uh, witnessed inspirational stories being shared by the nurses who are already citizens of the United States. And what's the common theme for most of their inspirational stories? In the Philippines, they never owned a house, they never owned a car. Who would have thought that now they're living the American dream, they have their own house, they have their own lot, they have their own car in the United States of America, and they're a citizen already. And yes, they were able to achieve all of those in approximately five years. The others less, the other is more, but that's the batting average. You can say that you can be fulfilled in the United States of America if you stay there for at least five years. So yes, comparing all the countries mentioned, okay, New Zealand is ideal if you're in a hurry to go abroad and you want livable conditions. What if you want savings? Yes, go to Australia. But if you want a country that's wide open with or without pandemic, and it's very multicultural, there are a lot of Filipinos, then it's Canada. For the three countries that prioritize healthcare workers, UK is the one that deploys the fastest. However, it is a temporary pit stop for a majority of the applicants because the ultimate, the final destination that they have in mind is the United States of America. So now looking at my uh, phone, it's 1042. So that means to say we can still accommodate questions from our attendees. Class, I do not pretend to be an immigration lawyer. Okay, I am not even a licensed migration agent, but what I'm sharing here is from the perspective of an English reviewer who has deployed several Filipinos to these six countries in my last 15 years as an IELTS reviewer. So now we're going to open the floor. Any questions, we are going to accommodate. Class, let me clarify. Whatever information I'm going to share with you in answering your questions, I'll be very honest. If I don't know the answer, I'll say it up front. I don't know because I don't want that information to be taken against me. This is just the benevolent me, the altruistic me, sharing my knowledge and information totally free of charge. But if I don't know the answer, I'll tell you up front, okay? So let's take a look at the questions. Now, Jane Olives is asking, how much is the processing fee? Well, the truth of the matter is I am not promoting any visa consultancy. I am not promoting any recruitment agency. I am here as uh, a responsible citizen of the Republic of the Philippines sharing vital and correct information on how you can pursue your dream in going to those countries. So regarding the question, how much is the processing fee? Well, it depends on the consultant or the agency that you're talking to. Most recruitment agencies are not allowed to collect fees, but for consultants, student visa consultancies usually don't charge anything because it's the school that pays them uh, in the end. But for uh, immigrant visa application, the other is charged 40,000, the other is 50,000, the other is 60,000. Now, how come for a student visa application, there is no charge, but for immigrant visa application, there is a charge? Well, that's because schools pay the student visa consultants, but the embassies don't pay the immigrant visa consultants. So how are they going to keep their company running? By charging the applicants, okay? Now, here's another question. What is the best country that has lesser restrictions when it comes to experience and medical health condition? Uh, I, I wouldn't use the term best when it comes to experience and medical health condition. I'd say U.S. and Australia, if you want to save a lot. B because for me, that's the one that matters most. I mean, you're going to go to a different country. You're going to experience racial discrimination, language barrier, even if they use English, because apparently they have local jargon, they have slang terms. Then in winter, you're going to experience negative 20 degrees Celsius. 
in your country, you might be a manager, you might be a supervisor, but when you go there, you start from scratch. So I would rather you go to a country that will maximize your potential in becoming a millionaire in Philippine pesos, ASAP. So I won't change a bit. I'll always promote USA and Australia. What else? Okay, April Christine is asking, which is easier, IELTS or OET? Well, it actually depends on where you are going. Because if you're going to Canada, you cannot take OET and use it for your immigrant visa application. If you're applying for US visa screen, also, you cannot use OET for now. But if you're targeting UK, Australia, Ireland, New Zealand, it's OET that I recommend. So instead of answering that question, I'll throw the question back at you. Where are you going? And from there, I'll, I have said my recommendation already. Ria Conde, what is the needed IELTS module for a student visa in Canada? Academic. Eli Domingo, sir, is your face-to-face -face review in Manila ongoing already? Yes. Face-to-face -face at Picampa, España, Manila, uh, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. But... We share the schedule ahead of time. We have to follow IATF policies because under alert level four, face-to-face -face classes are not allowed. But if NCR is under alert level three or alert level two, yes, we are allowed to operate and offer face-to-face -face classes, provided that you bring your vaccination card. All of our employees and lecturers handling face-to-face -face are fully vaccinated. We also expect you to present your vaccination card. And then, Joe A. Sir, does Canada have a minimum grade for IELTS for 40 years old? Well, the minimum to qualify for immigrant visa is six per subtest. But it does not mean that they are going to invite you with just six per subtest, knowing that you're not getting the maximum points for age anymore. If you're 40 years old, try okay, to get higher grades in IELTS especially if you don't have masters, especially if you don't have relatives, and especially if your partner or spouse is not willing to take the IELTS. Consider all those immigration criteria I have mentioned earlier. Okay, Elisa Ayanko, how much will I spend for UK application? Well, no show money required. Accommodation is usually sponsored by the employer. Airfare is also paid for by the employer. In the beginning, you have to allot money for your IELTS or OET, uh, CBT, and then budget in gathering the required documents. But I don't really think it's going to be a lot. You look for an NHS trust, a recruitment agency, or an employer who's going to reimburse your expenses in IELTS, OET, CBT. So, to answer your question, in the beginning, if you have approximately 30 to 40,000 pesos, I think that might be enough to pay for your examination expenses, provided that you make it on your first attempt. It's like one shot, one kill. And then in the end, you just ask your employer to reimburse those expenses. So you have to keep the keep a record of what you've spent. Okay. Darla Lacerna. Sir, what is a good CRS score for a Canadian Express entry? Honestly, good CRS score, the higher the better. Because they are not going to invite you with a lower CRS score. So what's CRS? Remember the point system that we talked about earlier, the immigration criteria. Okay. You have to get as many points as you can if you want Canada to invite you. But if you know that other people might have better chances than you, might be best to apply for a student visa instead. Which is the country from the topics discussed that has the best stain and when it comes to independent worker with a working visa? Australia and USA. Can I bring my child even if I use a student visa going to Canada? Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, some of my uh, former reviewees were able to bring their kids. The only problem is who's going to take care of them while you are there. Because as a parent, you can actually be imprisoned if you leave your kids at home and no one is taking care of them. So sometimes it's a liability to bring your kids with you, especially if there is no one to take care of them. But good for you if you have friends or relatives to take care of them. But if you're going there, 
as a first timer with no one else to do the things for you, it might be best to leave your kids behind. That's for infinity heart. Elisa Ayanko, which is easier, the easier English test for UK application. OET, final answer. Christian Dave Cortez. Hi, I'm from Cebu. How about an EMS work experience as a nurse? Does it count for the, a work experience? I'm sorry I am not a nurse, but what is EMS? Uh, ask yourself, does this one have something to do with patient interaction? If yes, then that work experience counts. Okay, Shed is asking, how much for OET review? It's 4,000 pesos unlimited for life. Sa Niner, my forever die. Okay, so with 4,000 pesos, you don't have to force yourself to take the examination within one month or within three months because your review is going to expire soon. But this is actually the case. Quality review need not be expensive. Okay. You were able to attend the classes of my other lecturers, like Ms. Den conducted the classes recently. There's Marlon, there's Philip, there's Brian, and then soon I'm going to ask Fritz to join us on board here on IFNG. You can actually check the quality of our instructors, but why can we accommodate everyone? That's because now we have a total of 109 coaches on our team. That's why we have one-on-one -on -one coaching 24-7, and we have an online review from every habitable continent. Krisha Elaine De Castro, is it okay for taking IELTS to UK? I'm a nurse. Yeah, you can actually take IELTS and going to UK. But between the two, IELTS is cheaper. OET is more expensive. But more nurses pass OET because of their writing subtest. So you weigh your options. Will, will you go for the cheaper examination or the examination that has a history of a higher fasting rate. Uh, Camille, yes, I enjoy the face-to-face -face canina. Thank you, Miss Isa. Okay, shout out to Miss Isa Mia. Here's your student who enjoyed your face-to-face -face classes earlier at Picampa Espana Manila Branch. JD is asking exactly the same question that I have answered several times. Between US and Australia, when it comes to student and working visa application, Australia does not give working visa for nurses, but US gives employment-based immig uh, immigrant visa. That's why if your budget is tight, choose USA instead. Because for Australia, you have to pay a front for quite a lot of expenses because Australia does not offer working visa for a starter. Love, Koto might not be the real name. Should I declare all my first degree relatives or is it enough to declare just one? Well, you can actually declare all of them, but you just need documents from one, okay? Is the age limit of 35 years old applicable to all countries? No, 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 I did not say that's the age limit. I'm saying for immigration criteria, they award higher immigration points if you're 21 to 35, but I did not in any way say that the age limit is 35. Christian Dave Cortez, thank you, you're welcome. Abigail Kamali. So if, for example, I pass the IELTS for registered nurse application in New Zealand, can I bring my mother with me? No, you cannot bring your brother, you cannot bring your sister, your mother or father, but you can bring your spouse, you can bring your kids. That's how it works. But what if you want to be reunited with your parents or brother or sister someday? You can actually sponsor their application someday, but not now. You have to be there first, okay? Hans, how much is the IELTS review of Niner? Like what I've said, it's 4,000 valid for life. But this coming November, we're going to launch another uh, program that hopefully will maximize your potential, not just in passing an English test, but in securing a better future with all the inclusions that we're offering today, so the 27th, you, you just have to wait for like four more days. The, the announcement is on the 1st of November. 
I'm a former reviewer, but I couldn't find my receipt. Could you find my name in your system to get a discount? Well, we don't give discount to former reviewees because 4,000 only for life, that's the discount already. So it doesn't matter whether you have a proof that you're enrolled before or not, it's 4,000. Okay, April. I enrolled in nine review for life. Can I change my review option to OVT? No, it's add 2,000 to upgrade to buy one, take 30. Shed, thank you for the information. You're welcome. And I'm also thanking you because you stayed with me until the end of the discussion. Jan Ward Hapitana. Uh, what does it take to be a part of your team as an IELTS coach, teacher, or mentor? Well, recently I hired 10 new IELTS coaches and 20 new IELTS coaches. When some of them leave this November or December, because that's how quick UK is in deploying nurses, I might be posting another hiring come November or December. Well, you have to be quick because when I post, usually there are a lot of applications on the same day. And I usually filter the applicants based on these two criteria. Number one, are you a former Niner reviewee? to make sure that you're familiar with our format or structure. And then number two, what grades did you get in the examination? Well, apparently for IELTS, I prefer to hire those with higher scores. In OET, it's very common to find applicants with a B in writing, B in speaking. So that's my minimum requirement. However, if you have an A in writing or A in speaking, which is rare but not impossible, 99% sure I'm going to hire you. Uh, idea about the screening process. What screening process? Please be more specific with the question. Can I migrate to UK with my family? Oh, yes, Krisha, you can actually do that. Some of my coaches uh, brought their family to the United Kingdom, even if they were just granted a working visa. So, yes, they're a happy family in the UK now. Sylvester, sir, I'm a radiographer. I had a, uh, an employer sponsor my visa to work in UK. They recommend me to take IELTS GT. What, what's the score that I need to take? If I'm not mistaken, it's 7.0 overall band score and minimum of 6.5 per subtest. If you are a radiographer going to the United Kingdom, applying for credentialing with HC. BC. Jane Olives is asking in Canada, what could be the IELTS passing rate that they require? Like what I've said earlier, the minimum is six, but it doesn't mean that you will be invited if you only got six. If it's immigrant visa application, especially express entry, the higher the, the higher the IELTS general training score, the higher the immigration points, the more chances that you will be invited. Okay, thank you. I think th this is from Pearl's Clinic in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Again, I cannot read your name. It's in Arabic. But yes, you're welcome. Okay, Shed is from Doha. Camille, thank you for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. Jeff Balahadia, what about HCPC? Let me just check. HCPC, that's health care. Let me just check. Health and Care Professions Council of the United Kingdom. So as a radiographer, you have you, you need to have your uh, credentials assessed by HCBC. Jacqueline said, hi, Jacqueline Luther. And I'm saying, hello. Medical screening. Oh, for medical screening, you, you can't be HIV positive. You... Uh, you can't have cancer, you can't be drug dependent, and uh, you must not have hepatitis, and you must not have a lung scar, okay? So thank you for specifying your, thank you for making your question specific because I was able to provide a more specific answer. Sheila, if I bring my husband with me, if I pass as UKRN, what visa can he have? I think it's the dependent visa, but your husband can still work full-time in the UK if you're going to bring him. Eliza Ayanko, for NCLEX application, how much is the fee? Oh, I'm sorry, but we don't process NCLEX. Our partner for NCLEX application 
is iPass Processing. You can message uh, the Facebook account directly. The people managing iPass are very friendly and approachable. Shout out to Miss Rachel Olivar, Miss Jean Olivar, Miss Jeanette Olivar. Okay. Uh, Jan Ward said hello. Uh, hi there. I think I responded. I wait lang. Parang mag hello siya dun sa nag hi. Baka ito na yung sinasabing tadhana. Okay? Baka kayo ang itinadhana. Malay nyo, after tonight, uh, you're going to get extra points because you were able to find a partner. Char not char. Okay, the one from Riyadh, her name is Lian. So hello there. Long scars prohibited, uh, prohibited for the screening process. It actually depends on the embassy because from time to time they change policies like what i've said i don't pretend to be an immigration lawyer because i am not i am not a licensed migration agent but for the longest time i'm getting feedback from my former reviewees who have applied in those countries yes meeting place ifng pinagtagpo ah itinadhana oh yes Okay, that's 11 p.m. Okay, for our winner for tonight. Earlier he asked, how much is our OET review fee? Guess what? You don't have to pay anymore because I am giving you a buy one, take 30 unlimited for life. So that's inclusive of IELTS, OET, PTE, TOEFL, CELPIP, life skills, and everything that you can think of. Congratulations. Shed Adam Alhabsi from Qatar. You are the winner for tonight's Buy One Take 30 Unlimited Review for Life. You can message me directly on Facebook. I'm going to create a group chat together with the processing team in order for your online review dashboard to be activated. Once again, congratulations and thank you for participating for being with me since uh, we started at 9 p.m. Uh, he acknowledged and said, thank you so much. You are welcome. Miss Glads, Sir Marvin, do you have anything else to say? Hi, Sir so Marvin. Yeah. Yes, Sir Marvin, I think there's a question on Zoom. From yeah, uh, sorry, uh, sorry I, I did not check the Zoom because yes. I'm just looking at the Facebook comments. Yes, what was okay. the question on Zoom? So, so the question from Lecter was, Niner has a branch in Cebu, right? If yes, yes there do, you is. Offer, mm -hmm. do you offer PPE review there and how much? Okay, for PTE review, it's just online because Australia recently opened. So for the longest time, just a handful of people were considering PTE. But that's exactly why Brian Martin Shawson is going to handle IFNG classes the entire month of November because Brian got the perfect grade in all components of PTE, like 90 over 90 per subject and overall 90 over 90. And it's timely because like what I've said, Australia now has announced that they're lifting the temporary uh, closure of their borders. So for that question that was asked on Zoom, no PTE face-to-face -face class in Cebu, but it's online. But I, I tell you, it's worth it if Brian Martin Shawson is your lecturer. Okay, so I think that's it from Zoom. Okay, so Queen M, you are really happy that you're back with us. <laughs> it's been <Yeah>. a while. <laughs> Although we, all, we also enjoyed the lectures of our previous um, lectures, but still... You are still the queen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there can only yes. be one. Yeah. And then so we're looking forward, sir, with Sir Brian on November uh, in November rather. So yes, I have bring it Brian again. <laughs> okay, so thank you again, uh, Sir Irving, for, for giving you. us your time and your expertise, even though you keep on saying that you are not an expert, but still you managed to answer our questions. Uh, with regard to the processing of these countries that we are targeting. So thank you everyone for staying. So just look, uh, Sir Irvin, thank you for the, ano pala, for the free lecture na binigay mo. And then sa free, ano, um, tawag nito, sa binigay mong review doon sa ating participants. So yeah, let's share Adam uh -huh. Alhamsi. 
Okay, I'll just wait for his personal message, but I may not be able to reply tonight because it's bedtime already. Yeah, it's 11. <laughs> In just a few okay. hours, it's tomorrow already. Yes, okay. So again, let's call it a night. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sir Irving. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.